With its sweeping golden sands and rolling green hills, Tor Bay in South Devon has long been seen as the land of milk and honey. An order of medieval monks certainly thought so. Their magnificent Tor Abbey was established here in 1196, complete with its tower, cloisters, and its own brewery. Today, artisan drinks maker Simon Aykroyd is following the friars' fermentations, whilst planning to give their old habits a new sparkle. I don't want to just make another wine or another cider or another beer. I want to make something quirky and different. Tor Abbey lies just west of Torquay, a short sandal walk from the beach. Simon specializes in blending tipples from unexpected natural ingredients. And with the Abbey's well-stocked gardens, he's hoping for rich pickings. First and foremost, you know, I'm a, I'm a forager and I'm a gardener, uh, and, and I'm also a scrounger as well. So actually, if I can actually come to a garden like this and actually find some amazing plants with some really, really interesting flavors, then that's great. But what I'm trying to do is find something different. To rustle up the makings of his next vintage, Simon's meeting head gardener, Ali Marshall. Not so many flowers for you at this time of year, but I, we have got some interesting fruit coming up. Yeah, fantastic. Wow. And their first port of call is the impressive palm house. I'm getting all these amazing smells from around here. There's a wealth of fruits and exotic plants here from far-flung corners of the world. But Simon's not convinced that any have the right nose for what he needs. Sometimes amazing aromas don't always translate to a great drink. I mean, it's like grapes. Grapes actually don't smell that great, but they make a, a great wine. But after exploring the gardens, he stung into action by something much more commonplace. Oh, well, I, f I, feel, I feel really bad. You showed me all these beautiful flowers, amazing plants, and here we are in, the, uh, in your nettle patch. <laughs> For his star ingredient, Simon has set his sights on a weed we've all been on the sharp end of, stinging nettles. Actually, Nettles makes a fantastic, fantastic drink. It's really, really nice flavours. I might be pushing it a bit, sort of say it's a bit like a, a Sauvignon Blanc, but, but I'm really, really looking forward to trying it and just sort of seeing how the, how the Nettle wine works out. This is probably a really good patch for you because it's fairly young growth and I imagine that's what you need. Yeah, I'm after, I'm after basically, a bit like a tea maker, I'm after the tips. So, uh, yeah, so the fresh tips be perfect. What I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get an essence of the, of the flavour of a certain region. You know, it's all about trying to create something really, really interesting that people will enjoy and people will feel, you know, like even if you just come and visit Devon, you know, you are getting a, a proper, genuine taste of Devon. Simon will be enlisting Tor's volunteer gardeners, Margaret Forbes Hamilton and David Garland as guinea pigs for his prickly potion. But they're more used to pulling nettles up than quaffing them down. Well, I know they're edible, um, not just to the butterflies or the caterpillars. I haven't had nettle wine. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> I'm really drawn to that. I think it's good to try new things. Um, of course, you know, wine made from Grapes is, is fantastic, but, you know, why not kind of experiment a little bit? I think it's really nice that Simon's doing something different as well. Back in his winemaking studio, Simon carefully blends his nettles with yeast, sugar, and the juice of 60 lemons. I just think this will really, really pull the flavors out of the nettles. I just think nettles and lemons, just perfect, perfect combination. So they've got fantastic medicinal qualities as well. Throughout history, people have used nettles for sort of a medicinal and culinary use. They're high in vitamins. Um, you know, so it's not just about a great flavoured drink. I'm hoping, I mean, OK, it's alcoholic, but I'm hoping that there will actually be some goodness and stuff in there as well. With staff at Tor Abbey set to taste the first sample, the plot's brewing. I think it will be quite an exciting, different type of drink. Um, but I'm hoping it will be really, really popular. But yeah, we'll, we'll find out when, uh, when they get to taste it. 
Simon's transforming his concoction into a sparkling wine. And for that, he needs the next phase to prove there's plenty of fizz. Artisan drinks maker Simon Aykroyd is checking whether his sparkling nettle wine is ripe for the first tasting session at the Abbey. It's always exciting, sort of sense of anticipation. I don't actually know what this will taste like. Simon needs to know whether his first batch has that all-important fizz. This is where, hopefully, there's pressure in there. Um, so I'm just going to dip it in a bit of water just to help that plug come out, just to sort of uh, lubricate it a bit. Otherwise, they can be prone to, to stick. And then, using my special stick, I pull this back. Wow, look at that. I think there's a bit of fizz in that. <laughs> Fantastic. Such a strong aroma. Um, yeah, really, really epitomises, to me, that epitomises on a spring day when you're walking through the woods and you can smell, like, the, the new growth. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Really, really pleased. Fantastic. Simon's now popping the cork on a whole new chapter in the Abbey's brewing history. The medieval monks would have produced beer and cider, but today head gardener Ali Marshall is keen to see all of Tor Abbey's plants put to good use. This garden, you know, goes back for 900 years or so. So things have been grown here ever since, and a lot of it, certainly the medieval garden where we are now, that really was a place where they used absolutely everything that they grew, so that, those old kind of things coming back. So it all feels kind of right. Love it. With the weight of brewing history on Simon's shoulders, the moment of truth is at hand. Hello, how are you? Hello. You all right? What are you expecting? Um, I don't know. I'm not... I'm, I have to admit, I'm not convinced by this yet. <laughs> you know that, don't you? I mean, I've given you, yeah, hopefully champagne flutes are the right things to try. Perfect. Absolutely to... perfect. Tor's volunteer gardeners make up the vital tasting panel. Hello, hello. <laughs> Come on in. So the pressure's on. This now is the first time that anyone else is going to have tried it, and hopefully there'll, there'll be some really nice comments on it and they'll really like it. There we go. OK. Hey, <laughs> also, I'll just do little bits for you. But have, a, have a sit, but like I say, it's have an open mind. Mm, yes. There's a freshness yeah. to it, isn't it? Oh, it's very herby, yeah. The verdict's in. Simon's pulled off a corker. Actually, it was a lot more pleasant <laughs> than I thought it might be. Um, it is really refreshing drink, actually, and it's kind of... Yeah, it's got a real sort of taste of foraging about it, so I, I quite like it. Prosecco is so last year. You know, we're over Prosecco. Next year might be the year of the nettle wine. Time to toast the Abbey's past and a sparkling future. Yeah, cheers. Thank you, everyone, for all your hard work. Absolutely. And Simon gets the green light to add a new vintage to his growing range of Devonian wines. I'm absolutely delighted, you know. It's all, you're never quite sure sort of uh, how people are going to react to a new drink. And this it is a bit of a quirky, unusual drink, you know. Really, really great feedback. So, yeah, delighted, absolutely delighted. With plenty more far-out flora to choose from, it looks as though Tor's tradition of atypical tipples is fortified for a good few years to come.